Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, I want to talk about the duplerin, or specifically what I would call a duplerin. It is something that exists in the glosses, it exists in the Zettel, and I believe it is a bread and butter technique that everyone should be using, but people don't use it a whole lot. And we're going to talk about the pros and cons, and specifically the reason why you don't see it and why you should. So first, we'll watch the exchange. Now, that was really quick, so we'll watch it one more time. But what you want to pay attention to is right here, where the opponent over here throws a right overhow. The fencer over here parries with a deflection cut. And then the second they make that deflection cut, they then immediately turn their blade on it, uh, basically push their momentum in the complete opposite direction from going up into their left to down into their right and conks the other person right on the head and a little bit on the hands. So why is this a duplerin? So in the text, what the duplerin basically tells you is a couple of things. That you use it, again, if you're a right-handed fencer, this person is left-handed. You, uh, When somebody comes in with a right overhow towards your head, it's coming in on your left side, you parry it with a zorn how, or maybe just any kind of parry. And the second you make contact with that, you double up on the same side, which is what duplerin is supposed to translate to, and you basically turn your blade from where it is and conk them right on the face. You basically zone them out with the first parry so that their cut misses, and as they're pulling back out of their cut to do whatever it is they're trying to do next, you interrupt the tempo and you take the shortest distance between two points and you just put their your blade and your edge right into their face. It's a very effective move. But then what the question is, why don't we see it more? And the reason for that, I believe, has everything to do with power generation and people's tendency to misconstrue hard cuts for good cuts. So looking at this in slow motion, what we see here is that this is the starting position of the cut. And if you've ever seen high-level cutting competitions, you'll actually see this exact scenario uh, used to increase the difficulty of a cut. Basically, you'll have a tatami mat. There'll be two sticks to the left and right of it. They have to start with their blade all the way out at full extension, touching one stick, and then they have to cut through the mat without cutting the second stick. Very hard to do. It's hard to do because it's hard to generate force in that small amount of space. You're at full extension. Your blade's all the way out there. You don't have a lot of great leverage. You're not moving it with your hips or your legs or anything other than your arms and a little bit of the rotation of your body. So it's hard to generate. But if you are good enough to generate it, it's perfectly capable of going through tatami mat, as we can see through those competitions. So where I think that the duplerin is a bread and butter move, there is an element of challenge that requires a certain amount of skill. But there is another aspect to this, and that is the deflection cut that sets it up. Again, this person is left-handed, so it's going to look a little bit different. But what you want to look for is that there needs to be this travel and this distance when deflecting that cut, and most importantly, the edge has to be facing it. Not just because we have floppy blades, and if you parry with the flat, it's probably not going to have very much energy, but because if you parry with the flat and somebody just rides your sword down, which happens a lot of the time when you're doing a deflection cut, it's going to go right into your hands unless your cross guard is facing out. So you always want to be doing this kind of crump motion, again, regardless of whether or not you have, uh, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. So you do this deflecting cut, you take the energy out of their cut, rendering it useless, and then you have to reverse your energy right where you are and come in there. The hang-ups that a lot of people have are they put way too much energy into this first cut, this first deflecting cut, and their tip goes sailing off into their left side, meaning that the follow-up cut they then try to push has a little bit more rotation on it, has a little bit more momentum, but it's much slower, and it's usually trivially easy for the person over here to just raise up their guard and parry it. The reason this uh, move works so well is specifically because of the difficulty of generating force from this distance and the shortness of the distance that happens. I mean, you, you look at it here, this is the parry, maybe this is the parry, and then one, two, three, four frames and you're hit on the head. It's one of the fastest parry repost moves that you can do in fencing. And it's something that everybody needs to be practicing more, specifically because it is perfect for dealing with people 
who try to come in hot and heavy with their first Oberhau and then use whatever mistake you make as a follow-up. This allows you, in no small effect, to take advantage of someone's commitment and hit them in a position where they are completely unsafe. Also, to put yourself into a neutral position once that cut gets made, once you end up here. And it, from this position, you are extremely safe. Not only from someone who tries to close in and grapple you, but someone who tries to back out and throw cuts. You're in this long point. Your tip is at the forefront and it's only these tiny little rotations of your hands that you need in order to protect yourself from basically any cut. All right, that's going to be it for today. If you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, feel free to send me an email at hemophytebreakdowns at gmail.com. Thanks, and I hope to see you next time.